All right, everyone. So today I wanted to share with you guys some tips and things that you can do to prepare for the upcoming holiday events. Now, I wanted to do this sooner rather than later because by the time that we get a lot more info, it might already be too late. And by that point, you might realize that you might not have the resources that you need in order to be able to complete this event. And this is especially suspicious considering how many back-to-back -back events that we've actually had recently. This is something Polarium really likes to do before they release big stuff, get people to drain their resources, and then when something really big comes out, it's a very difficult decision what you're going to have to do, whether you're going to have to spend money to get the resources to complete the new stuff, or whether you're going to have to skip out entirely. So that's why I wanted to get this out there. Now, we do know that we are going to be getting some holiday-related events. Cirilla posted this in the Discord server quite a while ago. You will definitely have something special in the game for New Year's and Christmas, but I can't confirm or deny that the Nicholas Fusion will be coming back. That's, of course, the dream, but we don't really know if that's going to be coming back. There is going to be holiday-related events, though. And actually, today, this was posted on the official Facebook page. As we're getting closer and closer to Christmas and New Year's, more and more little teasers are dropping, and the events in Raid Shadow Legends are also starting to wind down a bit. We just have one dungeon tournament for the Dragon's Lair right now, and besides that, nothing else. This is usually the time when a bunch of stuff gets announced. So that's why I wanted to get this out there sooner. Hopefully you guys can start preparing. So by the time the big announcements come out, you're not really going to be too overwhelmed and realize that uh, it's gonna be too late at that point. So with that being said, I also wanted to say very importantly that these are going to be my predictions because of course we don't have any kind of official announcement of what the holiday events are going to be. There is absolutely a possibility that I'm completely wrong and it's something way different than things that we've had in the past. But I'm going to go off of what Polarium really likes to do, and that's follow the things that they've done before. And uh, a lot of the events that we've had recently have been these fusion events where we have a whole bunch of different events. Several of them are running at the same time, and then they kind of rotate over to different events, and each one of these is going to have champions that are going to be a component in a fusion that you need to get a legendary champion. So very similar to the Harvest Jack fusion or the Brachus fusion, and even the Molly fusion and fusions that we've had before. That's what I'm guessing that this holiday-related event is going to be, but once again, there is still the possibility that I'm wrong. The good news is, even if I am wrong, a lot of these tips will still allow you to prepare for whatever it is that Polarium has the actual Christmas event to be, because they're just good things to do to prepare for events in general overall. Now, with that being said, this is a list of possible events that we could be getting with this giant holiday fusion, and this is going off of the events that we had in the Brachus fusion, the Harvest Jack fusion, so we have the champion training event, and usually when it comes to these really big fusions, they like to release a giant champion training event. I'm talking about like 15 or 20,000 points. And usually this giant champion training event runs the entire duration or a very large duration of the actual fusion. So a lot of the other events that are coming up in the list, those will be shorter. They'll usually last for two, three, or four days or so. But the really big champion training event usually lasts for something like nine days, 12 days, uh, 14 days, something crazy like that. So you have a lot of time in order to get all the points that you would need for that. Then there's also the champion training tourneys, which are very similar to the champion training events, except for these ones in order to get points. Unfortunately, you don't get points by leveling up champions normally. Uh, you get points by leveling them up in the tavern. So that's a big way to end up completing that. I know that some of the recent fusions that we've had have had champion training tournaments as well as the champion training events. Then we have the Dungeon Divers event, pretty simple one, which actually ties along with the next thing on the list, which, which, list, which is the Dungeon Tournaments, specific Dungeon Tournaments, like for the Dragon Slayer, for the Fire Knight Slayer, Ice Golems, Spiders, uh, things like that. And a lot of the times in these big fusion events, not only will they have the uh, dungeon Divers event for all dungeons, then they'll have the tournaments for specific dungeons, but they'll also put in specific champion drops from these dungeons, and you'll need those champions for the fusion as well. So it all really does tie together to have you use as many resources as you possibly can. But the good news is you'll be able to be efficient and at least knock out some birds with one stone and complete the tournaments as well as get the champions from those dungeons both at the same time. So a lot of the fusion events have uh, kind of followed this route. Then we have the arena assault event. We have the summon rush events. This is the one that I'm a little bit worried for, especially considering the double raids that we just had for sacreds. Uh, you have the tournament version of that, which is the Champion Chase Tournament, which is going to be very similar to the Summon Rush, just another summoning-related event. 
And my prediction, I don't think we actually had this for the last fusion, which was the Brachus. I'm not sure if we had it for Harvest Drag. I think we did have it for Molly, though. And that is that they will be bringing back the Artifact Enhancement event as one of the components for these fusions as well. You guys know that's the Cursed event. Lots of problems been going on with that. But recently we had one. I think it's fixed now, so I think they're going to be including it as, the, uh, as a rotation for these big fusion events so that's definitely something to be mindful of so with that being said i wanted to share with you guys i think it's a list of eight things that you can do to help prepare for all this madness that could be coming our way and uh, let's start off with number one which is a really big one and something that i think a lot of people forget about until it's actually too late and until the event starts and then they realize that they want to spend their energy and a whole bunch of other stuff and that is ascension potions you're gonna need a lot of ascension potions for these fusions so definitely not a bad idea if you're really low on your actual ascension potion count maybe not a bad idea to at least get some of them i wouldn't go too crazy because you don't know what the affinities of the fusion champions are going to be quite yet so you don't want to go too crazy on one affinity and then realize that the majority of champions for the fusion are going to be another affinity but especially things like the arcane potions are always going to need these this is a good one to help prepare and stock up some of those for the fusion and maybe get some of the lessers and a decent amount of the graders um, you know just enough to where you have at least the potions for a couple champions of each affinity and then after the actual announcement and we have more info on what the champions are going to be you'll be able to better focus on the certain affinities for the ascension potions that you're going to need so that's going to end up being number one right there and the good news is even if we don't have this happen as the actual holiday event you're still going to be able to use those ascension potions at some point in the future for other champions so it's not like they're going to go to waste or anything like that and a lot of these tips are going to be the same you know even if the holiday event is completely different from my prediction and from what we've had in the past a lot of these things are still going to help you repair for whatever it is in the future either way now let's move on to number two, and this is food to upgrade your three and four stars. Now I say three and four stars specifically because that's primarily what you're going to be leveling up for the fusion events. You're going to have a lot of three star rare champions that you're going to need to take to four stars. And then of course, max level and ascend in order to actually fuse for the champions. And then the four stars, same thing. You'll be taking the epic champions most likely from four stars to five stars, getting them max ascended to five stars and re-leveling them back up for the fusion. So never a bad idea to at least have some food prepared. Now, this is a really important note about this tip is maybe you don't want to go too crazy on this one, because if we go back to the actual event list, remember, we're going to have a really big champion training event that coincides with this fusion. That's been the theme anyway. I would be very surprised if they did it differently if a fusion does come out. And what that means is you'll be able to knock out a lot of points for this champion training event by just farming for food. So you could prepare a little bit, especially if you plan to rank up and ascend a lot of champions. Maybe the besides the actual fusion champions, you've got big plans coming up. Um, you know, you can always do that. You can always work on preparing. Something I talked about in one of my recent videos is if you have the champion space, never a bad idea to keep at least some champions at max level so that when these champion training events do come out, you can be prepared and rank them up and immediately just get some points for one of those events. But this is something you can kind of plan and adjust to depending on what your goals are. So I would say don't go too crazy on it though because uh, then it'll be more difficult to get the crazy amount of points that you'll need for that big champion training event. So that's going to end up being number two on the list. Now number three, and this is an important one for the champion training tournament, not the champion training event. And of course the champion training tournament, unfortunately, one of the big ways to get points is to level up champions, but not from the campaign. You have to actually level them up in the tavern. So not a bad idea to stock up on some brews. I always like to have a good amount of brews saved up in case we get one of these champion training tournaments. The good news is you get so many of these from just clan bosses and whatnot that I never really found the brew packs to ever be worth it in a million years. So if you just run your clan boss daily and you play the game, you should end up stocking up quite a bit of these. And I would always try to save at least a decent amount of them for possible champion training tournaments. And that includes the possible champion training tournaments for the upcoming holiday event. So that's something to definitely be mindful of. Next up, and this is a really big one that I like to do, and you guys will see why in a second, and that is working on stocking up mystery shards for a cheaper way to get points for possible summon rushes and champion chase 
tournaments. Now, this is something that a lot of people are worried about, and that includes me, especially with the double rates for sacred shards. Player really likes to drain people of their shards before events come out. And if there's going to be a summon rush or a champion chase tournament where you need to get a certain number of points to get a champion that you need for the fusion, that's going to be really difficult if you just used all of your shards. So I always like to have a really big reserve of mystery shards just in case. Because mystery shards, you can farm them in-game, they're just going to be for food, but that way, if you need a bunch of points for one of these summon rushes or champion uh, training or champion chase tournaments, you don't have to use your valuable shards that you would much rather save for better summon events, like double rates events, right? If I had the choice between using a bunch of mystery shards because I needed points to get a champion from a summon rush versus using ancient shards and not being able to use them for double rates, I'd much rather use the mystery shards. So I always like to keep a big amount of these just in case you never really know. And this is definitely something that I would be not surprised at all if Polarium ended up doing. So that's one of the really big ones that I like to do to be prepared for one of these big events. All right, next up is working on waiting to collect all time limited resources. Now this is a big one, a very important one, and always going to be one of the most important tips for these really big events that require an insane amount of resources, especially to those of you guys that are free to play or you don't really spend a lot of money on the game. If you don't save up any energy or any gems or any resources in general, it's gonna be very difficult to really do these big fusion events. So I would work on just getting in the habit of learning on ways that you can save time limited resources and things like energy, experience boosts, arena tokens, things like that. Now, some of them, unfortunately, there's nothing you can really do. Like for the daily ones, I still always like to hold on to these as long as I possibly can, especially if I'm overcapped on energy, which I generally really avoid doing as much as I possibly can. Sometimes I'll wait five, 10 minutes before the actual daily reset to claim this stuff. Same with the playtime rewards. Uh, the weeklies gives you a little bit more flexibility because you can actually hold on to, there's a couple of experience, or sorry, not experience, there's a couple of energy refills in here. You can wait on, collect those a couple of days later. The monthly ones are great because these ones you can hold on to for up to a full 30 days. Of course, you have all the stuff in your mailbox as well that you can hold off on. Just anywhere that you can, wherever you can hold off resources that aren't time limited, I would definitely get in the habit of doing that, not just for this possible event, but also for upcoming future events. That's it's going to allow you to have a lot more resources to work with when the event actually does come out so that you're not going to have as much pressure getting stuff done. So that's a big one for pretty much every single event and never a bad idea to start that early now even before we have the actual official announcement for the upcoming holiday event. So that's, uh, that's going to end up being number five on the list. Now, number six is, this is a, an important one because people forget that the fusion costs, if you don't have any silver at all, you're going to need at least a little bit. Now, I don't remember exactly how much it costs. I believe the final fusion to get the legendary, whatever it's going to be, it's around a million or so silver, but it still costs a decent amount of silver to fuse the champions and just be prepared, especially if we are going to have a artifact enhancement event and my prediction is that we will now i've been right a decent amount of times but i've also been wrong but i really feel like that last artifact enhancement event that we had a week or two ago was just testing the waters for this big holiday event so be prepared never a bad idea to just have a decent amount of silver saved up you definitely don't have to go crazy like me this is insanity 100 plus million silver is ridiculous but try to have at least a little bit saved up for the actual fusion costs as well as a possible artifact enhancement event that we are going to be getting and finally the last thing on the list this is definitely a very very important one um and oh never mind this is actually not the last one this is the second to last one yeah second to last one but definitely still a very important one and probably one of the biggest mistakes that i've personally made when it comes to the holiday fusions and that's going through and checking your champions just kind of have a note of what champions that you have and keeping note of champions that they really like to use for the fusion events now this is especially true with the campaign champions this is something that they've done a lot recently is the actual rares from the campaign, a lot of them have been used for the fusion. I don't remember exactly which ones, but I know a decent amount of them have been used for the fusion. So if you have spare copies of them, maybe don't get rid of them quite yet because you might end up using them soon. I always like to use the copies that don't have any skill ups before I use copies that I've used duplicates to skill up. So uh, just be prepared for the fact that there's probably gonna be a whole bunch of different rare champions that we'll need for the fusion. Some of them 
Uh, you won't have had any opportunity to get them before the actual fusion comes out, but other ones like the ones from the campaign, you can kind of be prepared a little bit and uh, have that started a little bit and kind of keep note of which ones you have already and maybe save yourself some energy and resources. I've made the mistake of accidentally double farming rares for fusions and it is extremely infuriating when you just spent a thousand plus energy farming for a rare and realizing that you already had one and you didn't even need to do it in the first place. So that's something that will definitely drive you crazy if you do like I have. And now the real last thing and this is an important one. I just bombed you guys with an insane amount of info on things to prepare for this fusion but a very important one is to have fun and try not to burn out too much before the actual fusion even comes out now remember they haven't even made an official announcement at least at the time of me making this video it's very well possible that i could be wrong and that it's going to be completely different from one of the fusion events that we've had before but you definitely don't want to burn out on the event before it comes out either way have fun do these things if you enjoy preparing but don't go too crazy and then by the time that the event comes out realize that you are just burned out on the game and you don't even want to do it anyway so that's a big one and uh, of course I wanted to include this at the end because of all the info that I threw at you guys today. So with that being said, that is going to be it for the video. I'm really hoping that you guys enjoyed these tips and things to prepare. And uh, if you guys did enjoy the video and you want more videos like this in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you guys for all the support everyone. If you want to help out, tossing a quick like means more than you can even imagine. So thank you to all of you guys to do that. And of course, if you're interested in more Raid Shadow Legends videos, guides, tutorials, and fun stuff, they should be popping up on the screen right about now. Getting close to almost 100 Raid videos on the channel, and there should also be more in the suggested videos to your right. So, have a great day, everyone. Take care, and until next time, this is Salt of the Salty Guild, signing out.